This is ABC 7 News at noon. Your Suncoast News. We're here for you. Good afternoon and happy Labor Day. I'm Jacqueline Matter. Scott Dennis has the day off. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Let's check in. And topping our news today at noon, a big announcement is expected today from President Trump on where he stands on a program that protects young immigrants. The pro president is expected to end the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals or DACA program. It protects young immigrants who were brought into the country illegally as children. The president's plan would have DACA repealed in the next six months. And if it is repealed, many undocumented immigrants who arrived in the country as children could lose protection from deportation. People familiar with the plan say the delay would be intended to give Congress time to decide whether it wants to address the status of the affected young immigrants. The president's priorities on immigration are to create a system that encourages legal immigration and benefits our economy and American workers. There are 800,000 DACA kids, kids who are brought across the border. The median age, I think, is six years old uh, for those 800,000 when they came across the border. They should not be punished for the sins of their parents. Former President Barack Obama put that policy in place five years ago through an executive order. It's not clear how the six-month delay would work in practice and what would happen to people who currently have work permits under the program or whose permits expire during the six-month stretch. Also in Washington, it's back to work for Congress today, and they have their hands full. Their workload includes funding the government by month's end and increasing the federal borrowing limit to head off a catastrophic first ever default. But first, the House and Senate will face a push to immediately approve initial funds to respond to Hurricane Harvey. A vote on that could come as early as this week. If approved, more than $7 billion would be aided to help with recovery and rebuilding needs in Houston, Louisiana, and other affected areas. And speaking of Harvey, millions are still cleaning up in its aftermath today. The storm is being blamed for at least 44 deaths and destroying or damaging more than 185,000 homes. In some parts of Houston, a mandatory evacuation order is still in place. ABC's Elizabeth Herr has more details. With houses still several feet underwater, the mayor ordering mandatory evacuations and cutting power to more than 4,500 homes in West Houston. If you got water in your home, I'm requiring you to evacuate. This to reduce the risk of electrocutions over concerns water levels in the area could get even higher and not recede for weeks after the controlled release of two major reservoirs. Meanwhile, just outside Houston, this controlled burn overnight at the Arkema chemical plant going off without a hitch. And the evacuation order for residents there within a mile and a half of that plant finally lifted. We're going to continue to maintain air quality testing uh, for some time to come. Um, we have seen no uh, evidence of, uh, of any issues with any of those results. And for some 120,000 residents in Beaumont, Water is flowing again, but the pressure still too low and the water not safe to drink, with crews there waiting for floodwaters to recede before they can repair the broken water pumps. We just don't know where, when, when it's going to end and how it's going to end. Back in Houston, the cleanup daunting and even delaying the school year. 53 of the city schools have major damage, 22 extensive, and the superintendent says some 10 to 12,000 students will need to be moved to new schools for now. And today, Houston is getting some much needed help, getting rid of these piles of debris. We are told heavy duty garbage trucks arrived here from San Antonio to help with the massive cleanup the city hopes to complete within weeks. Elizabeth Herr, ABC News, Bel Air, Texas. As the cleanup process continues in the wake of Harvey, there's another hurricane we're keeping track of. The National Oce Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration releasing these satellite images of Hurricane Irma. The images were taken as the sun rose over the Atlantic Ocean. It's expected to get stronger as it moves closer to the U.S. And the hurricane is currently a Category 3 storm. And joining me now, First Alert Meteorologist John Scalzi, who has... Uh, 
a little bit of a, you've seen some differences when it comes to uh, forecasting Hurricane Irma. Oh, you know what? I tell you what, I'm looking on social media now, there's all kinds of crazy things starting to go out there right. about the, you know, is this going to be a category six hurricane? <laughs> They're going to have to invent new categories because this is so large and, and you know, all of that is nonsense. Right. The fact is we're going to take this day by day and we're going to evaluate the forecast as we go along. And people have asked, well, where's it going now? Tell, tell me where it's going to be in a week. And, right. and here's the thing. If you, and I've done this kind of to scale here. So if you look at this ping pong ball, this is about the size that Irma would be. And this yardstick is roughly about the distance it would be from the state of Florida. Okay. Okay. So I have a little cup here that this ping pong ball would just fit into. Now, the thing is that just around the outer edge of this ping pong ball is where your strong hurricane force winds would be. Okay. The kind that could damage structures, you know. Right. About this far out is probably about where the tropical storm force winds would be, which would be quite a blow, but still it's not hurricane right. force winds. And then probably about this far out would be the influence of maybe where the uh, storm surge or flooding might occur. Okay, got that? So here's the little container where, which if you lived inside of, would be the hurricane force winds. Now imagine that if we put that right on the end of the yardstick, okay? Do you need to hold and, anything? Yeah, can you hold the end there? Sure. And you put the ball right here. The trick is to give this ball a little tap and forecast whether <laughs> or not it's going to land in that cup. I don't know. I don't think you could. That's a tough. <laughs> that's a tough job. And if you make a mistake, it's going to cost thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars in needless evacuations, and you run the risk of people not believing you again. Plus, you create needless fear. Now, let's add to that whole scenario because it's not hard enough. Let's turn <laughs> on a fan oh, because the atmosphere is moving, right? And you can see what this situation is. That's why we can't give you a forecast right now about where this will be in the time to come. What we can tell you is that over the weekend, we've watched the forecast model kind of shift, and there's less likelihood that it will be an Atlantic storm recurving back out into the Atlantic, and there's a better chance that it may impact the United States weather in one way or another. Okay. And, uh, and the state of Florida has become more important as a possible forecast landfall zone days down the road. But we don't know where, and the fact is it could land anywhere between Mobile, Alabama, and Charleston, West Virginia. Wow. So we'll we want to be prepared, right? Yeah. So this is the time to be prepared, because the weather is lovely today. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it's going to be a beautiful day. Let's take a look at the uh, tower cam as we put it into motion. You can see plenty of blue sky out there. So if you do not have your hurricane kit together, which you should do because this is the height of hurricane season, why this would be a good day to go out there, get your water, get your supplies, that sort of thing. As far as the day goes, it'll be a lovely day to be out at the beaches. Titan radar not showing any kind of weather around. If we get any showers, it'll be mostly inland, and that rain chance is small. Today's high topping out about 90. We'll give you the latest forecast tracks and what our thinking is on the storm currently in just a few minutes. Back to you. All right, thank you, John. We will check back in with you shortly. Developing this afternoon, deputies in Manatee County are still on the lookout for the person or persons responsible responsible for a string of burglaries over the weekend. A home and two businesses on 18th Street East in Bradenton were broken into and robbed. The theft happened sometime Saturday night into Sunday morning. If you have any information or witnessed anything suspicious in that area, you're being asked to contact Manatee County Crime Stoppers at the number listed on your screen. That number is 866-634-TIPS. Well, if you haven't noticed already, gas prices are on the rise this Labor Day. According to Gas Buddy, the average price for a gallon of regular unleaded is now $2.63. That's nearly 27 cents higher than it was just last week. Refinery closings and the temporary stoppage of oil drilling in the Gulf of Mexico in the wake of Hurricane Harvey are being to blame for that hike. Well, in just about an hour, Labor Day festivities will kick off in Venice. Snookhaven is hosting its Labor Day music event, where Punta Gorda singer-songwriter singer Jack Michael and his band are among the performances. Kayak and canoe rentals are also available. Guests can choose from 30 craft and domestic beers. That event all starts at 1 o'clock. For a list of more Labor Day events, just head over to our website at mysuncoast.com. Still to come on your Suncoast News, new concerns about North Korea after reports that the country could be getting ready for another missile test. And the British royal family is about to get bigger. The latest bundle of joy news coming from Kensington Palace. Stay with us. We'll be right back. 
Are you a food lover, restaurant goer, or home cook? Then check out My Suncoast Dining on MySuncoast.com, your guide to the foodie lifestyle. ABC 7's own Chef Judy serves up her favorite recipes, cooking tips and trends, dining blogs, and helpful step-by-step -step videos. And you'll love the restaurant guide with direct links to your favorite Suncoast eateries. Whether you're cooking in or dining out, whet your appetite with tasty tips from Chef Judy at MySuncoast.com slash dining. There are many choices when it comes to AC companies. Our advice? Choose a company that performs employee background checks and is licensed with top manufacturers like Daikin. Daikin offers a 12-year parts and labor limited warranty. For better comfort and value, call Elite Heating and Air. Hi, I'm Chef Bob. Watch Aprons in the Kitchen every Wednesday morning on ABC7, where we'll be serving up the most awesome dishes. Then stop by your neighborhood Publix, pick up the recipe card, and all the ingredients. This is an important medical announcement. Barred IVC filters have been linked to punctured veins and problems with migration. Anyone who's received a barred IVC filter must receive medical monitoring and may be entitled to substantial compensation. If you have the Bard Recovery G2 or G2 Express filter, you are in a class of patients who should be compensated for some expenses. Call now for a free assessment of your case and potential money damages. This call is confidential. There's no cost and you may be eligible. Juries have awarded millions of dollars to people who should have been warned about the risks of the Bard IVC filters. Call the IVC filter hotline. If you or a loved one has received an IVC filter and experienced a vein puncture or required medical monitoring, you must call now. Call 800-329-3089. 800-329-3089. Enjoy some of the best Suncoast restaurants on me. Just go to mysuncoast.com slash dining, sign up for the newsletter if you haven't already, and you can win a $50 gift card to a restaurant in our area. We'll pick a winner each week, so go on our website and sign up now. There are many choices when it comes to AC companies. Our advice? Choose a company that performs employee background checks and is licensed with top manufacturers like Daikin. Daikin offers a 12-year parts and labor limited warranty. For better comfort and value, call Elite Heating and Air. Now your ABC7 First Alert weather forecast with meteorologist John Scalzi. Current air temperature coming in at a warm 88 degrees with a dew point value of 76. A lot of sunshine out there. Should be a beautiful day. I know a lot of people are going to be recreating, going out to the beaches and whatever. Maybe some boating. Should all be just fine for that. 87 degrees in Parrish, Braden, uh, Bradenton. Uh, Mayaka coming in at 87. So is Northport and Inglewood. 88 degrees right along the immediate beaches in Venice. A little bit cooler in Longbow Key coming in at 85. Uh, temperatures inland will probably top out in the low 90s, closer to the coastline, right along the beaches, maybe in the upper 80s. And this big ridge of high pressure extending over the deep south and the Atlantic, providing some pretty nice weather, actually. They, the periphery of it producing a few scattered showers along an old frontal boundary in the process of decay. We don't have a whole lot going on here. I think we'll see some pretty quiet, tranquil weather today. Although, because the winds are light enough and quiet enough, we will see the sea breeze start to produce the basic chance of inland showers later in the day. Still a lot of dry air in place from yesterday's very dry air that moved in, that tan colorization there. But that is in the process of moving out. A little bit more seasonably moist air moving in, and that's why we put in the slight rain chances today. Eventually, I think we'll start to see even better rain chances as we get some more Gulf moisture in here. High pressure, the dominant weather feature for us, an old frontal boundary kind of meandering. And then another front, a very important front in the future forecast track of Irma. That front is forecast, the trough producing it anyway, the upper level reflection is forecast to lift out of here by the end of the week and allow high pressure to build back in behind it. Now, the big question is whether that high pressure ridge back to the west and this high pressure ridge over the Atlantic will kind of connect together because that could have a major influence over the forecast track in the long run. We don't know. There's uh, too many ifs in that long range forecast beyond five or six or seven days. So we just have to uh, 
Take it a day at a time and see how it evolves. Scattered showers out in Gulf and Atlantic waters, but lots of sunshine for the most part. Mostly inland showers where the two sea breezes east and west coast collide this afternoon. Hardy County, DeSoto County, Highlands County, likely to see an isolated shower too. And of course, we watch the tropics. As far as the forecast goes today, it really is all about Irma, even though there are a couple of other places that we'll watch down the road. A 70% chance of development of that tropical wave, and this little area in the southern part of the Gulf waters will continue to watch too, but I don't think that will influence the United States weather. That's not going to lift northward and, like, hit Texas again or anything like that. Don't believe so. So Irma is still a good distance away from us, almost almost 1,650 miles, so a long way away. It's got a lot of area to move past. The center of the storm looks pretty well formed at this hour. It had filled in just a little bit, but now it looks like it, it's undergoing an eye wall replacement cycle. You'll see in that last flame, frame a pretty well-defined outer eye wall. So that's often an indication of strengthening, and the official forecast track does strengthen this storm system. The uh, Leeward Islands, the northern part from about Montserrat northward, have been issued hurricane warnings now. And then uh, islands to the west of that, like Puerto Rico, has been issued a, uh, a hurricane watch. Uh, the forecast models are in pretty good agreement up till the end of the official hurricane forecast track from the National Hurricane Center. But then beyond that time period, you see the issue. I mean, the spread is huge from Mobile, Alabama to Charleston, South Carolina. So we're waiting for these models to become into more concise agreement and we find out exactly what happens with that trough and how these high pressure ridges build. Here's your official forecast track from the Hurricane Center with a strengthening system, now a Category 3 storm building to Category 4, skirting the northern Leeward Islands. Wednesday into Saturday, moving in a general northwesterly course and perhaps impacting the island of Cuba on Saturday, but really... The cone of error is anywhere between the Bahama Island chain and all the way south to Jamaica. So it's a wait, watch, and see exactly what happens with this system down the road as that cone begins to narrow. 40% chance of showers by Wednesday, and then over the weekend we'll be watching the tropics. The, sooner this, the soonest this storm would impact Florida weather, if it did, would probably be Sunday into Monday. Back to you. All right, thanks, John. We will check back in with you shortly. Some exciting news from Kensington Palace this afternoon. Prince William and his wife, the Duchess of Cambridge, are expecting their third child. Kensington Palace made the official announcement on Twitter this morning. Now, William and Kate already have two children, four-year-old Prince George and two-year-old Princess Charlotte. The new royal baby will be fifth in line to the throne. And with the news that the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge are expecting their third child, also came the confirmation that Kate is once again suffering from a rare morning sickness. It affects 1-3% to of pregnant women, and it causes nausea and vomiting that's more severe than typical morning sickness. It's usually found in women who are sensitive to the higher hormone levels that come with pregnancy. Another cause is abnormal placenta growth. Kate had this condition in her two previous pregnancies, but doctors say the nausea usually goes away by the end of the first trimester. Well, it is a fall allergy. We don't have to worry about much here in Florida, but it could still affect you. Ragweed allergies are usually reported around Labor Day in the Midwest. Symptoms can include nasal itching, sneezing, congestion, postnasal drip, and eyes that are itchy, red, and swollen. It can also aggravate asthma symptoms for some folks and cause shortness of breath, wheezing, and coughing. Ragweed pollen is airborne, so it can travel, they've said, up to 400 miles from the origin of where the pollen came from. So just to be aware that even if you're not seeing a ragweed plant directly in front of you, that you could be still impacted by the windborne uh, pollen. Ragweed is a wild shrub that's native to the northern United States, Canada, and some parts of Florida, but it can be difficult to find since there are several species and they range in color and size. Doctors say it's possible to develop an allergy if you're new to an area that has ragweed or if you've moved to the U.S. within the past three years. In wake of Hurricane Harvey, blood is still needed to aid those in Houston and surrounding areas. Starting today, Sarasota Orthopedic Associates is teaming up with Suncoast Blood Bank and others to offer blood drives. The locations are listed on your screen. They include the mall at UTC and Doctors Hospital in Sarasota. Well, sports is next, but first it's time for lunch. Let's check in with ABC7 Culinary Director Judy Gallagher and see what she has on the menu for us today. Hey, Judy.
Hey there, and happy Labor Day. Well, you know, ribs seem to be a tradition on all the summer holidays. And the greatest thing of all is in Florida, we can grill and cook ribs year round and wear our white pants, right? So today I'm gonna make some ribs. I got them on sale at the Fresh Market. They're gonna come with three full baby back ribs to a package and I spent $27, so that's gonna feed plenty of people. Now, I grew up always having a Chinese-style version of barbecued ribs. We didn't know from Central Texas Barbecue out in Connecticut, so I have married a typical Reva Cooper, my mom's version of Chinese baby back ribs and a version of a, a Korean style. So it'll give a lot of flavor with extra ginger and garlic. Stay with me, we'll start making the paste as the marinade and get some started in the oven right away. For your plumbing, electrical, or air conditioning, and services is qualified, and service calls are free. Services.com. Services.com. Today, everyone is looking for more fashionable choices in flooring than ever before. And G. Freed has responded with a huge selection of carpets, tile, wood, laminate, and vinyl. Installed by a highly skilled team, G. Freed has got everything you're looking for and more. The next time you think about quality flooring, think G. Freed Flooring America. G. Freed, Flooring America. Our world is at your feet. Since 1972, Sleep King has provided quality mattresses and accessories at the best discounted prices available. Top brands like Simmons, Sealy, Serta, Beautyrest, iComfort, and more. With available free delivery, free financing, and free setup and removal for a comfortable night's sleep with same-day delivery, even if we have to carry it on our backs. Trust Sleep King of Sarasota. Buy it today, sleep on it tonight. So, you've decided to go to college. That's cool. So, pop quiz. Which is a better way to earn your degree? Commute to college and fill your gas tank, get stuck in traffic, drive in bad weather, try to find a parking space, walk a half mile to class, or learn online at Independence University. In the park on a bench, on the beach on a towel, or on your couch with your kid, your campus is wherever you want it to be. You don't go to college. College goes to you. That's Independence. That's Independence University. You schedule classes around your schedule and all your supplies, including a brand new laptop and tablet are included with tuition. At Independence U, you'll learn from professional instructors with real work experience. You'll get personal support in school and employment assistance when you graduate. Get your degree, but keep your life. That's Independence. That's Independence University. So if you're really smart, you'd call now. Call 1-800-319-0237. Independence U for an independent you. Call 1-800-319-0237. The ABC7 First Alert Hurricane Guide. Download yours today. For your plumbing, electrical, or air conditioning, and services is qualified, and service calls are free, and services.com, A-N-D, services.com. It was a rainy day in Chicago as the Tampa Bay Rays took on the White Sox on their home field. Rookie Lucas Giolito struck out 10 in seven innings and another home run and a return to give the White Sox a 6-2 win over the Rays. The Rays are back home today to host the Minnesota Twins. Game time is tonight at 7-10. Moving on to college football, Florida State will have a new starting quarterback this weekend. DeAndre Francois will miss the rest of the season after tearing a tendon in his left knee. The injury occurred in the fourth quarter of Saturday's 24-7 loss to Alabama. Coach Jimbo Fisher said after the game if Francois was out, James Blackman would likely be the next starter. Blackman would be only the second freshman in school history to start a game at quarterback. Chip Ferguson did so 32 years ago. Well, Sam Query making history. The tennis pro is now the first American in six years to reach the quarterfinals in the U.S. Open. He won three straight sets yesterday. And on the women's side, Venus Williams goes on to the quarterfinals for the second time in three years. The 37-year-old has seven Grand Slam titles and is seeking her first U.S. Open title in 16 years. Russian pro Mar Maria Sharapova was trying to become just the second wild card to reach the quarterfinals, but could not overcome her 51 unforced errors. She was eliminated. 
Meanwhile, here at home, the Sarasota Sailing Squadron hosted their signature Labor Day regatta over the weekend. The Youth Sailing Division competing for top spots and prizes over Sarasota Bay. Over 200 sailors were out on the waters, and most of the participants were junior sailors from across the state. The regatta was also an opportunity to learn about sailing programs for kids right here in Sarasota. We try to keep our sailors engaged for their entire lives, and so it's, it's great. You know, um, a lot of these kids will take this and go into college and continue sailing, so um, it's just a lot of really neat opportunities. Well, this was the 71st year of that regatta. Smelling good over in the kitchen. Let's check back in and see how lunch is going with Chef Judy. Jacqueline, you're smelling all the garlic and the ginger that's about to go in. The, I like to call it a paste more than a marinade. So what we're going to do is we're going to take six to seven cloves of garlic and just kind of chop them up a little bit. And then we're going to take about a half a cup of fresh ginger peeled and cut. Now that's going to, when we blend it, that's going to take rid of the shredded tears that you're going to see if there's any still left in there. They're a little bit woody. You want to remove that. So we're going to take a little bit of zest of orange peel and we're going to take Oh, about a tablespoon or two of brown sugar. It doesn't make a difference whether it's light or dark. So that's just going to start the base. So we'll go ahead and pulse that a little bit. I love garlic and ginger. It's just perfect. And obviously it makes the aroma. So now we're going to add about a tablespoon of kosher salt and then a splash of fish sauce. And you can find that in any market and just a dash of a rice wine vinegar. Then we're gonna take dark soy sauce, and you can even get the gluten-free dark soy sauce, and that's gonna be about two to three tablespoons worth, and organic toasted pure sesame oil. The toasted brings out an extra pop, and you know, I'm eyeballing it, but I have direct instructions on the recipe you can find on our website, mysuncoast.com. So let's give this a blend, and then we're going to go over to the ribs. Uh, with each pulse, it just the aroma gets better and better and better. So we have the paste, and I'm going to show that to you right there. Now with the racks, they're going to come, like I said, three in a package. And that's fine because I already have one full rack in the freezer for next time. What you're going to do is you're going to take this paste and you're going to rub it on both sides of the ribs, just like that, and really kind of get all the cracks and pull that aside, that little woody piece. And that's going to go in the oven at 400 degrees for half an hour. Then we're going to drop that temperature down to 300 degrees and then just broil it to crisp it at the very end on the sides. But remember, you can always turn on the grill and cook that at a medium heat as well. I'll be back to add in some rice and more flavors as we finish this delicious, easy Korean baby back ribs for today. Being the caregiver for my husband is truly a blessing, but sometimes it's easy to lose a part of myself. To be my best, for him and for me, it's important to have time to be able to recharge. When I called Tidewell Hospice, they gave me the chance to do just that. They helped me find the time to care for myself, all the while with the peace of mind of knowing my husband is in the very best hands. Tidewell Hospice, it's more than you think. What to do when your heating or air conditioning needs service or heaven forbid replacement? Call Air Now today. We've been serving Sarasota and Manatee County since 1946. We offer $49.95 tune-ups, lease or finance options, and remember, service today or it's free. So many possibilities worth exploring. Manasota Flooring. And for a limited time, Manasota Flooring is offering you unbelievable pricing on tile and laminate. Porcelain tile, only $1.59. Ceramic tile, 99 cents. And 16 by 16 tile, $1.19. Laminate flooring is only 99 cents, but these prices won't last. Don't miss out on these great deals. Hurry into Manasota Flooring today. Hi, I'm Joan London with A Place for Mom. Over the years, we've helped thousands of families find senior care and today's senior living communities 
have never been better. With amazing amenities like movie theaters, exercise rooms and swimming pools, public cafes, bars and bistros, even pet care services. And nobody understands your options like the advisors at A Place for Mom. These are local expert advisors that will partner with you to find the perfect place and determine the right level of care, whether that's just a helping hand or full-time memory care. Best of all, it's a free service. Call today, A Place for Mom. You know your family, we know senior living. Together, we'll make the right choice. Call A Place for Mom right now to get our free ebook on financing senior care, as well as a free referral for senior living communities in your area. Call 1-800-290-0352. That's 1-800-290-0352. Need more space in your place? The More Space Place can help. With Murphy beds that disappear to reveal a home office, living room, or den. Custom closets with designated areas for your shoes, bags, wardrobe, and accessories. Custom built entertainment centers, garage storage systems, and more. The More Space Place has three showrooms next to Sunny's on US 41 South in Sarasota, on Lakewood Ranch Boulevard just south of State Route 64 in Bradenton, and on Tamiami Trail next to Panera Bread in Port Charlotte. Put more space in your place at the More Space Place. 40 Carats Family Center presents a free speaker event, The Whole Brain Child, featuring world-renowned neuropsychiatrist and author, Dr. Dan Siegel, at Riverview High School Auditorium on Tuesday, October 3rd at 7 p.m. RSVP required at 40carats.org. Live from our studios on Florida's Sun Coast, this is ABC 7 News at noon. Your Sun Coast News, we're here for you. Welcome back. Topping our half hour, an escalating nuclear threat from North Korea. Today, the UN Security Council is once again calling an emergency meeting after concerns that another missile could be coming. ABC's Emily Rao has that story from Washington. Security Council is called to order. The second emergency UN Security Council meeting in a week after another nuclear test from North Korea, their largest one to date. War is never something the United States wants. We don't want it now. But our country's patience is not unlimited. Now a new layer of urgency for the global community, as experts say Kim Jong-un has made major progress in his nuclear program. North Koreans cheering as state television reports the hydrogen bomb could be mounted on a long-range ICBM. The latest test launch triggering a 6.3 magnitude earthquake. It was six times more, what we saw yesterday was six times more explosive than what they'd previously done. It was eight times more than what the U.S. dropped on Hiroshima. Overnight, South Korean fighter jets practicing live fire maneuvers simulating an attack on the north. President Trump leaving church service Sunday, giving a vague answer when asked directly about a U.S. military response. Mr. President, will you attack North Korea? But Defense Secretary James Mattis with this ominous warning. Any threat to the United States or its territories, including Guam, uh, or our allies will be met with a massive military response, a response both effective and overwhelming. President Trump will speak with the president of South Korea by phone later today. Reports say Kim Jong-un could be preparing for another missile test as early as next weekend. Emily Rao, ABC News, Washington. A heated threat out west as thousands are being forced to evacuate after a massive wildfire breaks out. Los Angeles has declared a state of emergency as firefighters battle what they're calling the largest blaze ever recorded. Nearly 7,000 acres of the iconic hills surrounding the country's second largest city has been burned. This is the biggest fire in 50 years, one of the biggest fires in our entire history. As of this afternoon, the fire is 30% contained. Glacier National Park in Montana was also evacuated because of fires, as well as Jolly Mountain in Washington State. Fortunately, no injuries or deaths have been reported so far. A follow-up this afternoon on the contest here in Florida to catch invasive lionfish. Florida Fish and Wildlife are expecting about 13,000 lionfish will be caught. So far, commercial and recreational fishermen have already hauled in 12,300 of them. Lionfish are native in ocean waters off Africa, Asia, and Australia, but they eat native fish that are important to maintaining healthy reefs and compete with other predatory fish for food. The annual contest started in May and wraps up today. And as far as our weather goes here, mm. we have hurricanes on this side, and we've got 
fires out west. Uh, I tell you what, <laughs> it's a crazy world, right? Yeah. yeah beautiful here, though. Right. Today is gorgeous. You know, and I was just thinking, you know, a lot of kids are home from school and yeah. parents are home at the same time. So everybody's together. What a great day to, yeah. like, finalize preparations for your hurricane plan and to get together your hurricane kit in the event you need it since we're at the height of hurricane season right we have a looming threat out there in Atlantic waters you know get together and, and, and nail down those last uh, last issues in your hurricane plan would you evacuate if you would evacuate how large a storm would it take before you had to evacuate yeah. you know you can find all that stuff online go to our webpage right. mysuncoast.com there's a, a an entire uh, hour i think almost hour yeah. long uh, video there for you to watch and uh, certainly a lot of other resources are out there links and such for and you I to definitely go to. think you can watch it again for a second time if you haven't already watched it or if it's your first or second time watching it again because exactly. there's a lot of useful information oh, yeah. that you might have missed the first time absolutely first thing to know is what's your evacuation so do you know if you don't know you got some work to do. Yeah. <laughs> We've got uh, across the region right now. We've got some pretty clear skies, some nice weather. Uh, we'll look for uh, fairly clear skies today, a few high level clouds. Other than that, not much of a rain chance today. Our rain chance really coming in at only about 20%, and that'll be mostly in inland areas, not near the coast. Daytime high today, about 90. Complete forecast for you. Coming up in just a few. Back to you. All right. Thanks, John. We will check back in with you shortly. Developing this afternoon, a bizarre murder case out of North Carolina where a man reportedly called 911 saying he killed his wife in a dream only to wake up and find her actually dead. ABC's Ariel Reship has that story. This young aspiring pastor charged with murdering his Sunday school teacher wife. I think I killed my wife. What, what do you mean by that? What happened? 28 year old Matthew Phelps arrested after a detailed and disturbing call to 911 early Friday morning. I had a dream, and then I turn on the lights, and she's dead on the floor. How? 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 Between labored breaths and alarming admission. I have blood all over me, and there's a bloody knife on the bed. And I think I did it. I can't believe this. A disoriented sounding caller telling the dispatcher he took cough medicine to sleep the night before. What medicine did you take? I took coarse eating. I know it can make you feel good, so a lot of times I can't sleep at night. She's not losing. Oh my God. He didn't deserve this. Just after 1.15 a.m., officers arriving at the couple's Raleigh townhome, discovering 29-year-old Lauren Phelps with multiple stab wounds. So he qualifies that, yes, it looks like I did kill her. The knife is here. I have blood all over me. However, this medicine made me do it. That's not an uncommon way for the people in his position to respond. Overnight, Bayer, the makers of Coracid, and extending their deepest sympathies to the family and telling ABC News patient safety is our top priority and there is no evidence to suggest that Coracid is associated with violent behavior. That was Ariel Reshef reporting. Now, police believe the crime was not a random act. A full investigation is underway. Meanwhile, Phelps is now being held without bond and is due in court tomorrow. His wife's funeral is later this afternoon. New this afternoon from Utah, a police officer is on paid leave after using aggressive force on a nurse during an arrest. Body cam video from the July incident shows Detective Jeff Payne dragging nurse Alex Wubbles from a hospital and then handcuffing her after she refused to allow blood to be drawn from an unconscious patient in a car crash investigation. Since being released, the video has sparked outrage across social media. Wubbles says she felt betrayed by law enforcement and her staff. She says she was following hospital policy and constitutional law which states the patient who was not a suspect had not given consent to draw blood. I stood for what was right, which was to protect the patient. I really feel betrayed. I feel betrayed by the police officers. I feel betrayed by my university police and security. Another police officer who hasn't been identified is also on leave. Prosecutors are asking for a full criminal investigation. Here in Florida, an Orlando man is accused of pistol whipping a 74-year-old woman who offered to give him a ride. The incident happened Sunday afternoon where deputies say the 42-year-old man asked the woman for a ride in a Home Depot parking lot. She allegedly agreed and he pistol whipped her in the face before forcing her out of the car. Just a few minutes earlier, deputies say that same man tried to carjack an 82-year-old woman at gunpoint in the parking lot, but that woman managed to escape. 
The 74-year-old victim was taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. The man is expected to face carjacking charges. A case of impersonation on I-75. That's where troopers say a man posed as a police officer and attempted to pull someone over. It all happened over the weekend near Alligator Alley. Troopers say the driver of this black Toyota rolled down his passenger side window and flashed a badge. Instead of pulling over, the driver of the other car called Hi Florida Highway Patrol, who ended up arresting him. 61-year-old Lloyd Chang is now charged with a third-degree felony. Multiple reports say he had tried to pull over other people as well. Each year, Sarasota County surveys its locals to find out what they like and don't like about living here, and it seems the top concern is too many people. According to the recent opinion survey, population growth is listed as the top issue for the fourth year in a row. Many locals feel the increase of out-of-town residents is affecting their paradise, but others see the growth as a good thing. You can't hardly get anywhere without uh, fighting traffic. Businesses are coming here, and local businesses are growing. And if they hire people, that's more people. Other main concerns included financial issues, taxes, crime, homelessness, and health care. But overall, 97% of those surveyed rated their quality of life as good or excellent. And it is smelling better and better over in the kitchen. Let's check in with Chef Judy Gallagher. Well, I hope I went from good to excellent in this recipe. I certainly think so. So we've taken out the first rack of ribs. We had it sit overnight with that paste, that beautiful ginger garlic flavor with some soy in it. Now that it's come out of the oven, we're going to do two things. We're going to take some backup of the paste and just give it a real slight brush onto the ribs. And then we're going to take out a combination of dried orange peel and sesame seeds and that will go on top as well. So we'll do that right over here and then I have a bowl of hot water with kosher salt and lime and we're going to get that ready because you're going to need to use that to wash your hands especially for your guests. So if we turn it over we can see. Now you're going to have to be careful when you're going to grill outside because there is honey in this recipe and the sugar it begins to caramelize. So what you're going to do in effect is just lower the grill. When you do these in the oven you want to make sure you line the foil on the pan otherwise that pan is toast. Let me just wipe my hands really quickly and then let's show you the rice. I always say to buy um, regular Chinese, Japanese, Thai style rice because the flakes are a little bit different. It cooks a little bit differently. Now I'm using a brown rice. We're going to take a spoonful of that delicious paste that we have. Make sure you're using the paste that has not touched the ribs. If you dabble a spoon on the ribs and then dabble it back in, then you have to use a separate paste. So I always keep two bowls. So we'll get a little bit more in there, not too strong, and then some slivered scallions. This is makes for such an easy dish. You know, if you haven't decided what to do today and you're thinking about sunset, this is perfect. Run, get your ribs on sale. Even though it won't marinate overnight, at least you get about four hours in. So I'm going to go ahead and plate this up, get it ready, because I think John Scalzi and Jacqueline are ready to tuck in in just a few minutes. For your plumbing, electrical, or air conditioning, and services is qualified, and service calls are free, and services.com, A-N-D, services.com. Hi, I'm Chef Bob. Watch Aprons in the Kitchen every Wednesday morning on ABC7, where we'll be serving up the most awesome dishes. Then stop by your neighborhood Publix, pick up the recipe card, and all the ingredients. This is important news for women who were administered chemotherapy intravenously for breast cancer and then suffered permanent hair loss. The chemotherapy drug Taxotere has been linked to permanent alopecia or permanent hair loss. Some women administered the breast cancer chemotherapy drug Taxotere have suffered from permanent hair loss on scalp, eyebrows, and eyelashes. The FDA has urged doctors and the manufacturer to warn women administered Taxotere of the risk of permanent hair loss. If you or a loved one were administered chemotherapy 
chemotherapy intravenously for breast cancer and suffered permanent hair loss, you may have a right to a cash award and medical expenses. If you suffered permanent hair loss after chemotherapy for breast cancer, call the law offices of Davis and Crump at the number below right now to find out if you are eligible for a cash award and medical expenses. Call the law offices of Davis and Crump right now. Our first consultation is free and we don't get paid unless you get paid. Call now. Operators are standing by. Are you Goodwill? Yes, because when I donate or shop at Goodwill, I'm creating a job. I am Goodwill, yeah. ABC 7 News at 7, weeknights. For your plumbing, electrical, or air conditioning, and services is qualified, and service calls are free. AndServices.com. A-N-D-Services.com. Now your ABC7 First Alert weather forecast with meteorologist John Scalzi. 88 degrees, the air temperature. We have a dew point value coming in at 76 and lots of sunshine out there. I think it's going to be a very beautiful day. In fact, the next several days are going to be great days. 88 degrees in Parrish, Bradenton, Lakewood. Uh, <laughs> what are you doing that? Mayaka City. Uh, Wachula coming in at 86, 87 in Arcadia. Bradenton coming in at 89. So is Lakewood Ranch. And then 89 in Venice, 88 in Inglewood. Longbow Key comes in at 85. So across the state of Florida, we've had a few scattered showers here and there out in Gulf Waters. Nothing that's close to land. And we don't expect much. We do have one shower that's built in the last half hour in very extreme inland locations, but that's about it. And I don't think we're going to see a whole lot more than that today. Uh, inland areas, uh, Hardy, DeSoto, Highlands, that's really about it. Right along the spine of the state, I don't think you're going to see much near the coastline today. Pretty nice day. High pressure, the dominant weather feature, drier air slowly being replaced by a little bit more moisture as is typical for this time of year. So that even though we see those showers along the spine of the state today, I think they'll become more numerous as we head into tomorrow and particularly by about Wednesday, we'll be back to kind of a typical summertime day. Lots of sunshine mainly inland storms, and I think those storms will probably start fairly late in the day. They'll try to work their way back to the coast, but they kind of die out as they do so. And of course, we are watching the tropics. There's Irma. It's got a very well-defined eye wall now in the last couple of uh, hours and frames. You can clearly see what looks to be a developing secondary eye wall. And I think this is undergoing a what we call an eye wall replacement cycle on a forecast track that carries it pretty close to the extreme northern parts of the Leeward Islands. Um, I think we'll probably see some pretty strong winds there. Uh, maybe a Category 3 wind, possibly, depending on exactly where the eye ends up, as well as some very heavy rainfall, 10-inch rainfalls, and maybe a storm surge of 6 to 9 feet. So not a good situation for those folks. And a uh, hurricane watch has now gone up for Puerto Rico. I'm sure other watches and warnings will be issued in the days to come for areas like Hispaniola and Cuba and areas of the southern Bahama island chain as well. Forecast model tracks are pretty good agreement till you get to about Saturday, and they are put the uh, center of the storm right about here. Then beyond that, there's a lot of spread. At some point, all computer models suggest that this storm is going to turn northward. But exactly where that happens is still in question. It could be anywhere from the Bahama Island chain, making a northward turn and taking it up toward Charleston, or it could be much further out into Gulf waters, making a turn up toward Mobile, Alabama, or anywhere in between. However, Florida has become a, uh, a, 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 a more important concern for track forecasters over the course of the last couple of days as a recurve back out into open waters of the Atlantic becomes less likely. So we'll watch this storm day by day, and uh, we'll see exactly where the forecast track from the Hurricane Center ends up going. But this is an excellent time to uh, make sure that all of your preparations are in line, in order, and you have your kit together just in case. If we did see some storminess around here, it would probably start uh, over the weekend, late Sunday into Monday. I think the winds will start to pick up perhaps as early as Friday night, and certainly over the weekend it will be 
not good boating weather for sure. That much we can say. Back to you. All right, thank you, John. An update this afternoon on the Snook Haven Labor Day event. We're learning that event has since been canceled due to heavy rains. The Mayaka River is also flooded. Well, the holiday weekend may have been a time to relax for some, but for others, it was a time to make a difference for thousands of local workers. New college students and Sarasota activists gathered yesterday in Sarasota to discuss how they can influence big businesses to take part in a fair food program. The program protects workers' rights, safety, and pay, including those outside of the U.S. Students we spoke to say Sarasota is known to have strong ties to these efforts, and the Fair Food Standards Program is also based out of this area. And right now we're seeing that there's more actions happening with the um, students on campus and also with local community activists and advocates. So we decided that it was time to have this coalition and have this fair food group come together to really um, unify and make our objectives met. So far, Subway, Whole Foods and Walmart are already part of the fair food program. Organizers say there are plenty of other big names they still want on their list. When we come back, we'll wrap up lunch in the kitchen with Chef Judy, and it's a hero's welcome for Captain America, a story next in entertainment. Is your old garage door stuck or broken? Would a new one give you a lift? Let Precision Door Overhead Garage Door Service of Sarasota come to the rescue with prompt and affordable repair service. Replacement doors come with an array of styles and colors, and they are rated to meet and exceed Florida standards. From estimates to installation, your satisfaction is our priority. If you're not 100% satisfied with any product, service, or installation, we will make it right, because Precision Door Service is a name you can trust. Attention, Americans eligible for Medicare. Are you getting all the benefits you're entitled to? Did you know there may be money available to lower your medical prescription costs? Call Health Markets and we'll tell you if you qualify. Hi, I'm Dr. Martin Jitsi. It's a new Medicare year. That means more changes and more confusion. The key question is, what can you do now to ensure you get the care you need in the coming year? Call Health Markets today. You may qualify to save money on prescriptions. We'll help you find plans that may cost less, cover more, and could even lower your prescription costs to increase your savings. We help you find all the benefits you're entitled to, and we do it at no cost. Make sure you have what you need to get the care that's right for you. Find out if you qualify to receive extra help with your prescriptions. Call the number on the screen now. Representatives are standing by. Credit card debt can ruin your life. If you owe $10,000 and minimum payments are siphoning away your paycheck each month, you can get debt free in less time than you think. I've paid $800 a month for the past three years and haven't changed the balance on my credit card. Get Debt Free Now has a program to reduce your debt, stop the harassing phone calls, avoid financial ruin, and settle for less than you owe. I feel like a huge weight has been lifted off my shoulders. You're pre-approved for our special hardship program if you owe $10,000 or more. Upon payment of your new lower balance, your debt will finally shrink until you are debt free. My family no longer has 30 years of payments ahead of us at 20% interest. There's no fees until you see results. So call now, make one monthly program payment and free up your cash. Resolve your debt. Call 800-685-6422. 800-685-6422. A decade of war has taken an unprecedented toll on our men and women in uniform. Hundreds of thousands of our veterans are suffering from the trauma of war. At Justice for Vets, we believe that every veteran should have the opportunity for treatment and restoration. Get involved and go to justiceforvets.org. Help put treatment within reach of veterans in crisis. Veterans fought for our freedom. Now it's our turn to fight for theirs. Enjoy some of the best Suncoast restaurants on me. Just go to mysuncoast.com slash dining, sign up for the newsletter if you haven't already, and you can win a $50 gift card to a restaurant in our area. We'll pick a winner each week, so go on our website and sign up now. Oh, this is very good, Judy. 
Good flavor. Good. Lots of ginger mm. and garlic in mm -hmm. that. Just a little bit of soy, so it's not overly salty. Mm -mm. But I think the orange mm. peel and the sesame seeds really add to that punch at the end. Mm. So you can enjoy mm -mm. that with your rice. And wow. I'm going to remind everybody to go on mysuncoast.com, click on the recipe section of the dining page to get the recipe and you can also enter to win a $50 gift card to one of our restaurant partners on the website. Can't beat that. All right. Can't beat it. Judy, thanks very much. Happy Thank Labor Day. Thank you. Same to you, sir. Thank you. Back to you. All right. Thanks so much, Judy and John. Another social media domination for Taylor Swift. The pop star released a new song during ESPN's airing of the Alabama Florida State football game. The song Ready for It was also used in a preview of the new ABC fall season and quickly surged up the charts. Her upcoming album Reputation is due out in November. And a big happy birthday to the queen. Beyonce turns 36 years old today. Her husband Jay-Z started the celebration early yesterday by getting a crowd during his performance in Philadelphia to sing her happy birthday. No word yet on, on, on any big plans, but we're pretty sure they will be extravagant. We'll take a look at this. How about this homecoming? Captain America star Chris Evans taken down by his dog. The actor has been away for 10 weeks for filming, and that's 10 weeks away from his home and his puppy Dodger, who, as you can see, was quite happy to see him. Evans posted the clip on Twitter yesterday. Since then, it's received over 356,000 likes and 90,000 retweets. That's always the best when you come home and your dogs are always just so excited to see you. <laughs> and that looks exactly like RJ, my son's dog, that would greet him the same way. <laughs> they just have unconditional love, animals do. It's whether you're going to the mailbox or yep. you're gone for 10 weeks, it's all the same love. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? Yeah. Isn't that the truth? Like you've been gone for years when you yep. go to the mailbox. Yep. I know. That's great. So, of course, we're watching Irma. Bob will be in at 5 with the latest forecast track that will be just out from the Hurricane Center. You won't want to miss that. And uh, day by day, we'll be taking this storm and seeing exactly what it decides to do and how the atmosphere decides to cooperate. All right. You guys not. have a safe and happy Labor Day holiday.